shout out to Erin. I'm also self inspired by girls. I'm a blogger, speaker, among other things. But today, I'm the girl on your device who wants to talk to you about loving intelligently. <laughs> Courtship or dating is a time to love intelligently, and marriage is the time to love blindly. If you love intelligently in courtship, you can love blindly in marriage without killing yourself. Alright, so what do I mean by loving intelligently? I'll be giving you a few points so that you can understand what I mean. But just know that it means loving with your eyes open. Okay? Now that we've settled that, here are the points. So the first point when it comes to loving intelligently is choosing intelligently. If you don't know how to choose a spouse, I have a post on my blog, Lagerian.com, called How to Choose a Life Partner. I also have another one called Love versus God Said. For those of you that, is, that are staying in a dating nation that is killing you because God told you, please go and read both of them. So anyway, like I said, how do you choose intelligently? First of all, be the right person. Secondly, know what you want and want the right thing. Let your criteria match the job description. And what do I mean by that? Supposing I'm looking for a lesson teacher for my daughter, I would say, oh, the person should be six foot tall. The person should be fair, com- fair in complexion. The person should have voice that is like honey. No, I want somebody who actually knows how to teach, who loves children, and who is intelligent. For some of you guys, you say you are looking for someone that will be faithful to you for life, that will stand beside you through thick and thin. But when they ask you to bring out the list of what you are looking for, she must be figure eight. She must have Brazilian hair. She must have uh, long eyelashes. See, there's nothing wrong with marrying someone that looks attractive. But that is one of the most handsome people in the world. Take it or leave it. It's my YouTube channel. But when you are picking make sure that the criteria matches the job description even if you want to pick somebody that you're attracted to that's fine but if no about the first 10 things on your list the first three things on your list cannot be things that have to be superficial there's nothing about the shape of a lady's hips i'll just tell you by prophecy that this lady will be a good wife or about the sound of a guy's voice mm, that you just know by the only goals that this person will be a good husband look out for character look out for somebody who has a heart for god and a heart for people somebody who genuinely cares about you and somebody who like i always say somebody who has sense please choose intelligently all right the second thing i talk about when it comes to loving intelligently is forgiveness with sense someone said that love is best felt forgiveness and i couldn't agree more because when you marry somebody you forgive you be tired but you cannot be tired because that person too will forgive you and you will not be tired in Jesus' name. So, when you are dating, you forgive with sense. Let me give you an example. Supposing you are dating somebody and the person steals from you. I can't ask you not to forgive. As a child of God, it's your nature to forgive. You don't have a choice. What you do have a choice about is to end that relationship. This person cheated on you once. You forgive. Today on you again. You are dating. Please forgive with your sins. Somebody beats you. You have not married the lady. She has slapped you. She begged. You forgive. No problem. Maybe she will do it again. She begged. You want to forgive. No problem. But forgive with sins. Because you forgive forgiving somebody does not mean that you should continue the relationship. You don't have a choice to forgive. But you have a choice on whether or not to continue that dating relationship. And you have a choice now. You know you're married. When you're married, some people may walk away from marriages, but it's not it's not an easy thing to do. Alright? I think we'll talk about divorce in another um, in another episode. But forgive with sense so that you can have peace of mind if and when you marry this person. Okay? The next thing I'll talk about is 100 percent commitment and 100 percent sincerity. Two of them at the same point. What do I mean by this? First of all, I tell um, Christians that you don't date as a hobby. Dating is not a hobby. If you are bored, take up painting, writing, praying for the sick, preaching the gospel, which you should do whether or not you are bored. 
But if you are bored, don't say I was bored and I decided to date. Dating is not a hobby. Please understand. You date or court when you are preparing to get married. Chebi people here, very important. So, 100% commitment means you're not just saying, let's just see where it goes. You know, you see some people, they will say, I'm dating him, but I cannot marry him. I'm dating her, but she's not my wife. What are you doing there? So, be committed 100%. But you also have to be sincere with yourself. If you see things you know you cannot handle in marriage, please, kindly take a step backwards and rethink the entire thing. Because people enter marriage thinking that the other person is going to change. That person may never change. So you must ask yourself, if this person never changes, can we have a happy home? And if your answer is no, we think the entire thing. Alright, so the next point when it comes to loving intelligently is to structure your activities. I get how it can be when you're dating someone. The, the butterflies are in your stomach, you guys are just loving up on each other. There's Indian music playing in your head, you're cool, you're cool, and everything is so emotional. But if you don't stop being overly emotional and actually talk to each other, bring in activities that will help you both grow as individuals and as a couple, the future of that relationship is going to be in jeopardy. So of course, the emotions are important, but structure your activities. If you guys meet today, you look into each other's eyes. Meet tomorrow, you are touching. Next tomorrow, you are looking into each other's eyes. You're not going to grow as a couple. Like Pastor Bimbo Dukaya of Blessed Memory will say, courtship is the time for interview, not for intercourse. So this is the time to talk, do things together, take courses together. Just make, make sure that you're adding value to the other person and that you are both Roaming, volunteer together, go to church together, pray together. But please, if you're going to love intelligently, you can't afford to just look into each other's eyes. Mm -mm. Yeah. The final point when it comes to love intelligently, of course, there are so many points, but I'm sharing five today. Figure out the rest for yourself. Okay, I can help you, but when I have them, I'll share them with you. But the final point in today's video is know when to say goodbye. Courtship is not an institution. Dating is not an institution. If you're not married, you are not married. Don't you like because you are dating somebody, you have to marry them. I'm not saying that you should just enter this and be like, I'm a married man, not marry you. No. But don't feel like you have already gone so far. Where you are going to his father. There are sometimes you may need to take stock and look at the relationship up to down and say, hmm. This one is not really going anywhere. It's not really going anywhere. When you notice that, please give the person the gift of goodbye. I have a video as well as a post, a video on this YouTube channel, as well as a post on my blog, Seven Signs to End a Dating Relationship. So when you read through, you will know whether or not to give that person the gift of goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can be the first to know when I have new videos coming out. In the meantime, this is my blog, LadgerIran.com, or follow me on Instagram at LadgerIran. Have a lovely day and stay done.